Welcome to Coffee and Compliance, where we connect with experts on various compliance and security topics. I'm Rob Picard, security lead here at Vanta, and today we'll chat with Brian, the CEO and founder of Doppler, to ask the question, what's your secrets strategy? All righty, Brian from Doppler, thank you very much for joining me today. Yeah, it's a pleasure to be here. Super excited. Wonderful. Okay, so today we're talking about secrets, right? And I think uh, as much as I could find a dictionary, I would love for you to define for me what secrets are. What are we actually talking about um, in the context of this particular video? Yeah, secrets. Okay, so um, secrets are pieces of text that are used to authenticate from one service to another. So a really common example, you're going to like Airbnb.com and they have a bunch of listings and those listings are stored in a database. And so that application needs to be able to access that database. And that secret is like the key to the lock to that database. So um, secrets grant access to things, uh, services like Stripe, Twilio, databases, and so on. Um, they also used for configuration. Mostly they're used um, as ways to grant access. And uh, that's really, really important in today's world because like every application has secrets. That makes sense. And so just to clearly kind of state it out loud, even though it might be obvious to you, uh, we're not talking about your general IP at your company or your, you know, uh, secret strategy. We're talking about your secrets strategy. Yeah, exactly. So they're, it's not IP. It's not IP in that sense. It's it's literally like um, you're writing a line of code, and that code needs to talk to Stripe to handle customer transactions. And Stripe needs to know who you are. Like, is this uh, uh, company A or company B? And the way it can tell if it's company A or company B is the secret or the API key that you give to Stripe, saying, "Hey, this is me. This is who I am." Okay, perfect. I, I appreciate that setting of the table. Now, to kind of dive a little bit more into the the, the weeds of this. Um, like you said, every application has secrets, right? Every application has to talk to something, even if it's a database, if it's another service, uh, if you want to make money, you got to talk to Stripe or someone else, right? Um, I imagine each company has like a different strategy for dealing with this. Uh, and there's probably a spectrum, right? Of like beginning to very complex and highly, you know, uh, strategic. So uh, can you tell me a little bit about like what the ends of that spectrum look like and what you see? Yeah. Yeah, so I'd say most companies actually do not start with the strategy. If anything, they're probably using the same strategy that they have for code, which is, it's called a .env file. Um, it's a literal file that's on uh, your computer, probably in a repo um, that uh, that you have the rest of your code in. And it ha- it's basically a list of secrets, so like a key and a value. And then let's scale all the way up to like the largest companies, like in a top four accounting firm or, or even maybe an AWS. They, they have things very, very locked down in things called secrets managers. And they have a whole process, which we're starting to see today, called secret ops. Um, which we can talk about a little bit later, but basically it's a way of operationalizing your secrets at scale, making sure you have collaboration, making sure that you have management around those secrets. And there's a pretty big breadth in between. Um, and really, I think that the exciting thing uh, that we're starting to see now is that companies are starting to take that from a .env file, which is um, a very manual and insecure approach to something a little bit better. Um, and we're seeing like the average startup get a little bit better at managing their secrets, which I can dive into if you want. Yeah, I I think I've seen that in my experience as well. Like, uh, you know, when I talk to people who are, you know, very early startups and they're, you know, talking about their security posture, it's obvious to them that like, well, obviously, like our secrets aren't just in our code, right? Like they know that that's one of the things. Um, But everybody I talk to, like in every company I've been at personally, it's always a question of like, how much of a pain is it to manage secrets this way versus that way? Um, Like the logistics of actually getting these things where they need to be is really challenging. And I think going, kind of moving, there's a really easy move between we have no strategy to like, well, we have like some strategy here, but it's really hard to bridge the gap to uh, not necessarily all the way to we're AWS and we're, you know, have uh, teams dedicated to this, but like we're actually really locked down and we're really confident in the long-term robustness of this program. Yeah, we're seeing that a lot. It's it's so interesting to me because it's like the like like just like you said the the gap between uh, going from nothing to something people assume is going to be a lot, um, but that's actually just not true. Like today, 
uh, companies like Doppler, and we can talk about that in a, in a bit, are making a lot easier by uh, providing opinionation. Like we were like, you can build it in a way that basically uh, takes all these assumptions. And I find it's like when you have, when developers have to start answering questions, like how am I going to store this? Uh, what structure is going to be? How is it going to be encrypted? Uh, what's collaboration going to look like? How's access control is going to look like? When you start have to ask all those questions, that's when it gets really complicated and really slow. And you have to like build a team around it. But if there's uh, products today that exist that can answer a lot of those questions for you and provide a standardized way of managing your secrets, just like how we have a standardized way of managing our code or even our infrastructure like AW with AWS and GCP um, to to scale those operations uh, yeah. effortlessly. Or that closer. makes sense. And I think that's a good transition into uh, you kind of did a call forward to secret ops, right? And, I, and we had talked about like, you know, there's secrets management, but that's kind of one thing. And then there's secret ops, which is sort of a, a different concept and maybe a better way of approaching this as a problem. Um, what do you mean by secret ops? Yeah. So actually, I'm going to take a step back and I'm going to talk about what secrets management is real quick, because I think it's actually super important. And they're not um, it's not like one or the other. If anything, you probably have both or you should have both. So secrets management is in today's world is like AWS has a secrets manager, GCP has a secrets manager and so on. And they're just basically really secure enclaves of, for storing secrets. So it's key value and it's encrypted. That's basically all it is. And Co uh, companies sometimes get a little bit more crazy with it and they'll be like the key is has a bunch of slashes in it like folders to provide some organizational structure but at the very bare bones it's a key value storage yep. now secret ops is basically taking that and really extending it a lot and then saying okay now that we have storage covered um, let's go and do a couple of things. The first is we're going to centralize all those secrets in one place. So AWS Secrets Manager is great when you're on AWS, but what happens when you're uh, in local development on my laptop or you're in GitHub Actions for CICD or testing? Um, and so you really need a central authority to, to manage those secrets and then distribute them to all the places that are needed. Um, and so that's a really big thing. That's a huge unlock. Like the, a, a good example of parallel that you'd see today is like imagine the days before Google Docs or Notion where I had a Word document, you have a Word document, there's a Word document somewhere on some server somewhere, an FTP server, if you remember that from back in the day. And we're all editing it in real time. And so like I make an edit, I send it to you over email and Slack, and then you take, you download that file, you have to find what changed from your file to my file, and then incorporate those changes and then send that back up. And uh, that's a really painful process. Like I, I consider that like surgical level merge resolution, which is quite scary. And then you enter the days of like Google Docs and Notion where it's like one document in one place that everyone can collaborate and syncs in real time. And that's basically what we're bringing to secrets because the thing is companies don't have just one secret. Like our data shows that they have tens of thousands of secrets, even for the smallest of companies. Actually, we're, we're seeing a company today that has close to 100,000 secrets on Doppler and they're like a 15 person company. Um, or at least 15 seats on Doppler, 15 users on Doppler. Yeah. Um, and so the scale is growing quite rapidly because you have so many of these services. And so that's the first step is like centralized in one place. Once you can do that, you can apply access controls across everything from development to production and everything in between. And because everything in, is in one place and standardized in one format, you have one way of grouping, naming things. You have one way of having projects uh, and secrets grouped together. Uh, it allows you to have like common access controls. It allows you to have uh, common observability patterns to know where your secrets are, when, and who's accessing them. Um, and then really when you get to like the, the big scale, it's um, companies start talking about risk. And so if like you're a CISO or a security leader, or engineering leader, you should be thinking about the risk of your secrets because this one line of text can grant access, can grant a malicious actor access to your database or access to all your customers' credit cards. Like this is, when a, when a leak happens, it's not just like a bad TechCrunch article. It is your real customers getting impacted. They're the ones who bear the brunt. And when they sign up for your service, they, uh, you, uh, they expect you to take on that resp responsibility of protecting those secrets. And so um, this is really where the risk factor comes in. And you'll see that with things like secrets rotation. Um, and that's like, I think the, where secret ops is really getting powerful is allowing companies at scale to mitigate risk effortlessly. Yeah. So, Sorry, I, I didn't mean to interrupt you there. I, I, I totally agree with that. And I actually think like, I, I, the analogy you gave is just still ringing in my head that it's like passing around a, a couple of like Word docs and various files and not having a central uh, collaborative place to work. And the thing about secrets is, and, and this comes up every time, like I, uh, I talk about this just, you know, at, at any company, right? It's okay. Hey, you know, somebody needs a new secret to be generated and put into a certain place. And then somebody says, okay, I did it. 
And then I'm sitting there, wait, 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 what happened in between? <laughs> like, where does that, where is that copy of that secret? Did yes. it get emailed? Is it on Slack? Did it get uh, saved onto a local file? Was it uploaded somewhere and then never deleted the other place? You know, and I, I think that's actually really uh, one of the, one of the big things that, that is resonating with me is this idea of like, no, no, no. If you're the person who can generate the secret and you're the person who can put the secret in the right place, you too can talk without having to pass that secret back and forth, right? Um, or, you know, trying to, as, as a security person, say, no, 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 everybody has to use this secure file sharing mechanism that's like, you know, the blessed one at our company and use that to send the secret back and forth, right? Um, having a central place that's like, well, no, like the right people have the right access to put it where it needs to go. And it's not going to be, you know, a, a problem that they have that access. I think yeah. that's, that's a really powerful uh, thing. And not only that, but I mean, like the analogy we have at Doppler is like, would you allow just anyone to push code to production, even if they have access to production? No, it always goes through like one or two checks minimum, right? Because you don't want to push bad stuff to, to prod. Same exact thing with your secrets. If anything, secrets are more scary than code because like if someone gets your code, they understand how your application works and maybe they can clone it. But with your secrets, that grants access to real live data, um, to customer data. And so... Uh, things like pull requests now exist because you can centralize your secrets where engineer A can put up a PR that says, I want to land these two secrets in production and I want to delete this secret. And then two other people, maybe on the security team or DevOps team can go in and approve that. And there's an audit trail all the way through that's getting uh, pushed into like centralized logging, like Splunk and Sumo Logic and Datadog. So you have a ver observability about every action that's going on. And then when that uh, pure uh, pull request gets merged, just like how it would in GitHub and GitLab, your infrastructure gets that update and auto reloads, right? So it's not just like, oh, the secret is there, and now we have to figure out what to do. And there's like this manual process of today where I'd copy and paste it into AWS, click the restart button. Now it's an automated process, just like you have in GitHub and GitLab. You're getting the exact same code experience now with secrets in a secure way by default. Yeah, that, that absolutely makes sense. Um, now, we, we talked a little bit about Doppler. We've like touched on it, you know, and, and whatnot, but actually I, I kind of want to give you a little bit of a more direct like platform to talk about what you're doing at Doppler for this stuff. Um, and I'll come at it from this angle. So if I'm, you know, thinking about using a secret ops platform like Doppler, right. Or even like a secrets management service or anything that's like introducing a third party that I'm not already using potentially. Uh, my first thought is, well, that seems like that's a really good target for the attacker, right? Like that, that's not necessarily a good thing. All the stuff we talked about, secrets are very important. They're some of the most sensitive stuff. You don't necessarily need access to the code if you just get the secrets from over here. Um, so how do you think about, I guess, one, protecting those secrets is one thing, um, but that, it's, it's obvious that you're going to be thinking about that. But how do you think about like assuring the customer, uh, assuring me as the potential buyer that my secrets mm. are safe with you? Yeah, that's a great question. And by the way, I, I think I want to jump back real quick and then I'll jump forward. One thing that we hear all the time is like, do I actually have secrets? Is this a big thing for me? And it's like every company has secrets. If you have code that's running anywhere, I guarantee you are talking to some service and you have secrets. Yeah. Let's just put that out there. Um, okay, so how why trust Doppler with your secrets, which I think is like the, uh, the question at hand. And I, I come back to a couple things. One, it's not like you don't have any third parties. If anything, your entire company is built on third parties. You're using GitHub to manage your code. You're using AWS to run your infrastructure or even some company that is then built on AWS. Um, so you have third parties today and almost always those third parties already have access to your secrets, right? If you're running on AWS, they have access. If you're running tests on, on GitHub, they have access and so on. Um, and then the, the other thing is if you don't or if you don't have anything in place at all, you're actually uh, probably far worse off than ha than not having a solution like Doppler because you're not actively thinking about it. Like companies like Doppler spend all day, every day obsessing about how to keep your secret secure from all the different threat factors that could happen. That could be employees and maybe they go malicious or something happens or they just get exited and, and it's not malicious at all, but they may have actually like uh, forwarded an email or something like that to all the way to the technical side of like there are real hackers trying to get your information or trying to get your customer's information. And that's, I think, like really where the value comes in. It's like we spend all day thinking about that. But we also do one other thing in parallel. We make it so developers are going to love using the tool. We have this common uh, theme at Doppler we talk a lot about of making vegetables taste like candy. And this is so important in the world of dev tools and security because you can build the, the most secure thing in the world. But if you cannot get your developers to use it, it doesn't matter. It's, you're not going to get any value as a company. 
Um, and so that's really where Doppler strives is we, we obsess over making something developers are genuinely going to want to use. They're going to love it. They're going to see it as a productivity tool. We have tens of thousands of companies that don't have any DevOps security teams that use Doppler because they see it as a productivity tool. But then they also get all the security benefits on the side. Um, and then when you scale up in maturity, you're going to want serious efforts around um, managing risk and compliance. And that's uh, that's also where we can help, where we can turn all these things that would typically take hours or, or weeks into seconds. So like, I'll give you a really good example. We have a, a customer, actually, we just signed them today. I signed the DocuSign this morning. And um, they had, and this is a company, I guarantee you, you know about them. You probably have used their product once this week, at least. Um, and they had a malicious actor in their company, a real, uh, like, um, a real, I don't know, negative person in the company. I'm not going to say if it's a spy or hacker or whatever, but it was some, someone serious. And the security team realized that they exited that person or let them go, but they decided they had to rotate all their secrets and rotate is a fancy way of, uh, shut down or revoke the old secrets and issue new secrets out. It's kind of like changing the locks on the door. And they had to do that with every secret because this person was able to get access to every secret. It took them, uh, six months with three security engineers full-time rotating 2,000 secrets. We have now converted that into about 30 seconds of work that happens automatically without a person even clicking the button. Um, that is the value uh, you're getting from a company that just obsesses of this all, all day long. And it's fire and forget. That's how we build everything. That is super compelling pitch. Uh, well done. Um, very cool. So to wrap it up, um, if people are interested in Doppler and they're interested in secret ops, uh, they should go to Doppler.com and uh hit the contact us button no just go to doppler.com and sign up and give it a try like we really i mean that's actually a great point we don't want you to talk with sales first go use the product let the let the product tell you that or show you that it can drive value for you and your engineering team and if at that point where you're like yes i'm getting so much value that i really want to scale this up then at that point come contact sales but let the Perfect. products uh get you excited first perfect all right well thank you very much brian for joining me yeah, thank you. It's an absolute pleasure. All right.